Hi guys, today we are going to learn how to best use Ignite to optimize your sponsored product campaigns. Now, to begin with, we're actually starting off on the Ignite Manage Campaign dashboard. From here, you can actually see kind of an overview of all the Ignite Manage campaigns that you currently have running. At a glance, you can see the cost of these campaigns, the revenue, as well as the A cost. This is just a good place to start where you can kind of jump in and get an overview and see which campaigns you would like to revisit edit, or just kind of monitor. Now, an Ignite Managed Campaign is really designed to help you achieve a target ACoS and to provide you with actionable insights that you can actually use to help optimize your campaign over time. If you haven't actually created an Ignite Managed Campaign yet, you can click the Add Ignite Campaign button. This will allow you to create a new Ignite Managed Campaign from scratch by creating a new manual campaign as well as a new auto-targeting campaign or you can use existing auto-targeting and manual campaigns if you would like to. To see a full step-by-step -step process on how to create an Ignite Managed Campaign, you can watch this video that we have right here. This will take you through the steps and kind of show you all the things you need to do to get that campaign up and running. To start, let's actually go ahead and jump into our campaign. When you first open an Ignite Managed Campaign, you have a lot of information in front of you already. To begin with, you have a graph that gives you kind of a rundown of the information for this campaign. You'll see your total sales revenue, your sponsored product sales sold, as well as your advertising costs. This can let you see at a glance how your campaign has been performing over the past few days. There is a date range selector that does follow you across all the pages in Ignite. So no matter what you do, if you change the date here, it will change all the data that you see on your screen. In this area, you can change the name of this Ignite Managed Campaign. This will help you differentiate this campaign from other ones that you currently have running, so there's no confusion down the road. Here, you can also set a max A cost. This A cost is primarily used when Ignite is actually generating suggestions for your campaign. Most of these suggestions are aimed to help you lower your A cost and get it down to this max A cost that you have specified here. From here, you'll also be able to see all the advertised products that you currently have within this campaign. By clicking the View All button, you'll be able to see a breakdown of all of the campaigns that are currently being advertised in this Ignite Manage campaigns. By default, when you create a new campaign, Ignite will pull in all the child ASINs for the specific product that you're creating the campaign for. This makes it a lot easier to create a campaign without having to add all these ASINs individually. Let's go back to that overview page. To the right of the screen, you'll see where it says Suggestions. This is one of the best features of Ignite and possibly one of my favorites as well. You'll notice there are two sliders right here. One says Confidence and one says Importance as well. The confidence rating of a suggestion will go up when Ignite has more data to actually back up that suggestion. The more data that Ignite has, the higher the confidence level will be. With Importance, this will go up over time when Ignite deems the suggestion more important or when it determines that more is at stake. For instance, if you have a keyword that's not performing well and it has a very, very high A cost or you're spending a lot of money on it without getting any type of conversion back, the importance may be a lot higher here. We allow you to slide these down to get these into the range that you would like. This way you can see only the ones that have a high confidence and importance or you can go all the way down and see all the suggestions that are currently available. From here, you'll see there are three actions for each suggestion. One allows you to accept this suggestion, one allows you to reject it altogether, and one also allows you to delay this suggestion. For instance, in this suggestion, it's asking us to move a search term from a keyword and making it an exact match and reducing the bid. On top of this, it gives us some history about this word so we can see exactly why it's coming up with this suggestion. If you'd like to learn more about this keyword or use a search term before you accept or reject this suggestion, you can click the Explore Detail button. This will allow you to see more information about this user search term or keyword over time, and will also allow you to see the specs for the specific term. This can give you really important information to let you decide if this is a suggestion that you want to take part of now or if you want to delay it. When you do decide that you would like to delay a suggestion for a later time, you simply click the Delay button and you choose how many days you would like to delay the suggestion. If you decide to delay a suggestion, it will repopulate again at a later date with updated information. If I've decided that I don't have enough data for the suggestion yet, I can delay it 
and then see it later with updated information that may let me know I definitely should jump on this one or maybe it's not the best suggestion to take part of right now. We do have a suggestion tab which is really helpful that you can find up top. By opening up the suggestions page, you can see all of the active suggestions that you have at that time. You can filter these by campaign or the suggestion type that you would like to view. For instance, if I just want to see suggestions that deal with bid changes, I can have only the bid changes box selected. I can also change the confidence for all the suggestions that I see. And then I can click apply filters. In addition to this, I can do bulk approve, bulk delay, or bulk reject actions for all these suggestions that you see here. I can simply click the ones that I would like to approve or delay or reject, and then click the button above. This makes it a lot easier for me so I can view all these at once and make as many changes as possible in a shorter amount of time. In addition to the current, you can also visit the activity tab above. This tab will actually show you your previous suggestions what date they came around, and also whether you approved them, delayed them, or rejected them. This helps you in case you forgot what changes you made recently, so you can come back and see them later on. In addition to this, you can download a CSV that shows all the changes that you've made, so you can keep tabs of this, so you can review these changes over time to see what you did to get the results that you currently have. I do want to point out, it can take about seven days for Ignite to gain enough data to start generating these suggestions. If it's been over a week, just provide it some more time to let Ignite really analyze your campaigns and generate those suggestions that work best for you. The more traffic a campaign has, the more suggestions that may be generated. Now, let's revisit our Ignite campaign dashboard and let's scroll down to the bottom of the screen. And here, you'll see where it says Associated Campaigns. This is where you can see the campaigns that are currently linked to this Ignite Managed Campaigns. Or you can also link another campaign. If you wish to add another campaign to your Ignite Manage campaign, simply click Link Another Campaign. From here, you can select the campaign that you would like to link to this Ignite Manage campaign. You can see an overview, what type of campaign they are, and also just some basic specs about that campaign. Once you have found the campaign that you would like to link, you'll simply click the plus button to the right of that campaign. This will add it to your Ignite Manage campaign so Ignite can start offering suggestions for this campaign as well. While the suggestions in Ignite are incredible, something else that you can do is dive into your auto or manual targeting campaign so you can see exactly which user search terms or keywords are hurting you or helping you. To begin, let's open up this auto targeting campaign and let's dive into it to see how it's performing. When you first open up a campaign, you'll see that there's this wonderful graph up top that's actually a double axis graph. This graph allows you to view multiple metrics at once, so you can see exactly how your campaign has been performing over time. I usually like to have impressions on one side, and then my clicks on the other. This way, I can see how the clicks correlate with the impressions. You can change these to anything that you would like to. We provide many different variables that you can use so you can see the data that you want to, and you don't have to really dig through the other data if you don't want to see that at a glance. As I stated before, the date range selector up top can be changed at any time, and if you want to change it, you just click in the box and select the date that you would like to, or you can use a predetermined filter at the bottom. To dive into this auto-targeting campaign, we're actually going to click on where it says Targeting Auto. Since we cannot view specific keywords for an auto-targeting campaign, we will view the user search terms instead. From here, I can sort this data by clicking the headers up top, such as clicks, so I see the ones that had the most clicks first. I can do this for all of the headers in red on this page. For instance, if I want to see the ones that have the highest ACoS, I would simply click on the ACoS header. This allows you to sort the data with ease without having to make your own Excel spreadsheet and then sort it afterwards. If I find a user search term that's hurting me, I can simply click the Actions button to the left of it and can select the option to make this a negative exact or negative phrase keyword. I also have the option to make a new keyword altogether. Normally you have to dig into your auto-targeting campaign, find those user search terms, and then manually create that keyword in your manual targeted campaign. Let's step back and go to our manual targeted campaign. When viewing a manual targeting campaign, it looks a little bit different. In the keywords tab, you actually see keywords here. 
To the right of that, you'll see a number sign up top and then some numbers to the right of that keyword. This simply shows you how many user search terms you currently have associated with that keyword. From here, I can do the same thing as before on the auto-targeting campaign. I can click on any of these headers up top, so that way I can sort the data and make it easy to read. This way I can see which ones have the most clicks and then go over to see how the conversions look and possibly the A costs as well. By having these headers sortable, I can, only, I can view the data as I want to in ascending or descending order. You'll also notice other tabs up top that you can click on. Let's start with the Overview tab on the left-hand side. The Overview tab allows you to change the name of the campaign, allows you to pause it or enable it if you'd like to. You can choose an end date from here, and you can also change your daily budget. In addition to this, you can also archive the campaign altogether if you'd like to end it. The next tab, labeled Ad Groups, allows you to see the ad groups that you currently have running in this campaign. You can always make a new ad group with these just by clicking the New Ad Group button. From here, you can also change your default bid for that ad group. Next, you'll see Product Ads. This is where you can add another product to this campaign if you'd like to, so you can have multiple product ads for different ASINs or SKUs. In the Add Keywords button, you see a little more than what you would see within Amazon. Of course, you can add keywords to typing one keyword per line, choosing the ad group and the match type, and a bid if you'd like to as well. We have something awesome that allows you to actually see suggested keywords. From here, you can add these keywords as a broad phrase or exact match, and you can choose a bid for these terms as well. Over to the right, you'll see where it says position and score. A keyword's position simply means this is the position that your product will show up for when you search for this keyword. You want to have the position as close to one as possible. With the score, the higher the score, the better. A score simply shows how likely it is that this keyword will drive traffic to your product. You want to have a score as close to 100 and a position as close to 1. Once you have found a term that you would like to add, you simply choose the match type and then say Add Selected Keywords. In addition to this, you'll see where you can actually add keywords from a competitive ASIN. And this is a great tool because if you're in an auto-targeting campaign, you're going to notice that there are some competitive ASINs in there. Now, you can't add ASINs to a manual targeted campaign, but you can use that competitive ASIN, place it in here, and see some competitive keywords that you can use for your campaign. This can help you find some keywords that you may not have even ever thought of using in your campaign. Now let's dive into this campaign. To begin with, you want to open up one of the keywords that you would like to really dive into. Once you've clicked on that keyword, you'll see all the user search terms associated with that keyword. You also see the cost, the impressions, the clicks, the conversion rate, and the A costs. As we've done before, I'm going to sort by clicks to begin with. This lets me see which ones are actually getting the most clicks first. From here, you can see on a user search term level which terms are hurting you and which ones are helping you. As we did before, if you see some that aren't working for you, you can simply click the Actions button, and you can choose to set these as a negative keyword, or you can make them into a new keyword altogether if they are performing well for you. If you'd ever like to go back or go up a step within your Ignite Manage campaign, you can scroll up top and see exactly where you are, kind of like in a file directory. As you'll see, we're currently looking at a keyword for the broad match. I want to take a step back and go to the campaign, so I'm going to click on the Campaign tab. Now let's take a look at the last tab that we'll see in a manual campaign. The Negative Keywords tab is going to show you the negative keywords that you currently have within this campaign. In addition to this, you can add a new keyword here. You can choose to have it added at a campaign level or at a specific ad group level. Next, you'll choose the match type for that keyword. You'll type in the keyword and you'll click Add New Negative Keywords. Next, you should see the keywords show up in the list above that show the current negative keywords for the campaign or ad groups. A few other resources I want to point out, your Marketplaces tab. From here, you can see the marketplace that you currently have connected, and you can also choose to link other marketplaces at any time. We also provide a full campaign report that can come in handy. 
This report is going to show you all the campaigns that you currently have and will give you a breakdown of just some of the specs. You can actually download this report and you can save it as a CSV. If you'd like to search at any time, you can use the search bar to the left hand side of the screen. This allows you to look for specific campaigns so you can find them with ease without having to look for them in the manual targeted or auto targeted tab to the left. Finally, if you have any questions or any concerns, you can always contact us. Click on the Contact Us link in the Help section, or you can click at the bottom as well. This will open up a chat with one of our specialists and will reach out to us as soon as possible so we can answer any questions that you may have. We also have a full FAQ section that includes tutorials that you can visit at any time. Here you can find some answers to the questions that you have and can also learn more about the tool that we currently offer. We have created a free course called Ignite 101 that gives you a full breakdown of Ignite and tells you all the features and how to use it. You can sign up at any time by clicking the link here. You can also visit www.sellerlabsuniversity.com. That's everything for today. This was a full walkthrough of how to use Ignite to help you manage and optimize your sponsored product campaigns. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're always more than happy to help you out.